Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to be taking a look at a power bay by Brook Gaming. So this is a little Nintendo Switch dock that allows you to dock your Nintendo Switch so you can play it on a TV. But yet this does more than just dock your Switch. It also allows you to plug GameCube controllers directly into the dock and it also allows you to have audio via Bluetooth, not just one set of headphones but two sets of headphones and it does other things like a turbo button as well and it works as a normal stand so it does so much more than just a dock so this was sent to me for free by Brooke but it is not a sponsored video I'm not getting paid for this video when they told me about this they asked me would I like to look at it I'm often asked by various different companies to look at different things normally I don't do it because I don't really like the products but with this one as soon as I've seen it I thought that looks clever and I would like to review it hence the reason I'm doing a video on it. So now let's get started. Now, so this is the box here, and if you have a look at the side here, you can now pause this and read this in your own time if you're interested. But can you see there the Bluetooth is low latency? And this is the back here, and it just quickly shows you the different angles that you can use it at when you've just got your switch in tabletop mode, for example. So let's open it up and you will see how similar it looks to the actual GameCube. So here it is, like so. Yeah, so it's nice, isn't it? Nicely done. So now quickly looking around this, you can see that we have a little dust cover here and we have a USB-C port in here. Now look, can you see it's just allows a little bit of wiggle room. So for example, if your switch was in here and to get knocked, it's gonna cause less strain on the actual switch port, which is the important bit because this is going to be cheaper to replace than the actual switch. Now the price of this I'm not too sure, I think it's going to be around about $50, but it's not out at the moment, but hopefully it will be out in the next couple of months. Now we have two GameCube ports at the front here, one and two, we've also got two USB ports. We have a turbo button here and we have a function button here, I'll show you them working later on. Around the back we have HDMI out and we have power in, that is it. So a nice little portable dock. If we were to take the handle off the back, when you're in tabletop mode, we can put this in the back one there to have it more vertical. So you can look at the angle here, you can see it's more vertical, or we can have it flat, or you can have it at the front, and then it will kick the switch back more. So a nice little idea, nice little touch. All right, I suppose we better talk about the elephant in the room. So the elephant in the room is a third party docks and brick in your Nintendo Switch. Now personally I've never had a problem with a brick Nintendo Switch from a third party dock but I always use the official Nintendo Switch power supply. Now Brooke did say if you use the Nintendo Switch power supply then it's not going to be a problem. But what I would say is if you're really really nervous then stick with your Nintendo Switch dock because we don't know that something's going to happen in the future that Nintendo might update something that may work perfectly with their own dock but might not work with third party docks. So if you really want to be 100% safe then you'd be best to stick to either the official Nintendo Switch dock or take the insides out of the Nintendo Switch dock and put it into a small little portable case because the insides are still Nintendo Switch Dock. It's still official Nintendo Switch, you've just taken the inside out. When it comes to third party docks, you always run the risk that something may happen and it's not going to be supported by Nintendo because it's not made by Nintendo. But saying that, there might be many reasons why you would want to buy a third party dock. For example, as of May 2020, you might struggle to get an official Nintendo Switch dock. So if you break your one, or if you want one for another room, you might not have that option to actually get one unless you want to pay an inflated price on eBay. In which case, then you might be looking at third party docks. If you're looking at third party docks, then you might want one with a little bit extra, like this one here. But obviously, that's your decision to make. In this video, I'm just going to show you what it does. You can do your own research on whether you think it's safe or not to use third party docks. So now let's get started on the actual setup. Okay, so we're going to be using our official, make sure it's the official Nintendo Switch power supply. I'm plugging it in and we're going to be plugging that into the back here. To begin with, I'm just going to show you it docked, then we can worry about having it not docked and tabletop mode and all the rest of it. So now I need to get a HDMI cable and I need to plug it into the back here and the other end I need to plug into my TV. Okay, 
plug it in here, the screen will go off from here and then it will come onto the TV. There you go. And now you can see it working on the TV. And it's at 1080p and 60 frames a second. So if we now get our, this is just so easy, it's just all plug and play. So we've got our official GameCube controller, but I will also show you working on the Wavebird, which is also official, and uh, a third party GameCube controller as well. So watch this now, we're gonna be plugging it in and it's quite clever. The port is done on its side. So when it comes to using your Wavebird, you can plug that in on its side and then it's not blocking the screen if you wanna use it in tabletop mode. But check this out now, look. Can you see there? Just like that, it just starts working. You haven't got to do anything else. And this will now be working, mimicking a pro controller. So if I was to go down and show you the test inputs, it doesn't feel like there's any lag or anything. It just feels, just feels perfect, just like you're using any other USB controller. Right, so watch this now. A, B, Y, X. And then when you press these, can you see it's R, but look, when you press it all the way down, it then goes to right click in, yeah? So R, when you just do a little press, all the way in, it goes to right click in on the right stick. Again, L, left click in on that stick. But I'll show you these working as analog sticks. These are both working as analog sticks here. And then we have our D-pad here, yeah? Now, I won't press this here just yet, but this one, when it's in Switch Pro Controller mode, is working as the home button. But when it's working as a GameCube controller, it's working as the plus. Yeah. Now this is quite clever. If we press this button here, you can see it's not doing anything. But now if we press this button while hitting this button, just tapping it, can you see it's now ZL. So it goes from L to ZL when we hit down this Z button here. Or Z if you're from America. So now again on this one, it will be just R. But when we hit Z, and that one, it then becomes ZR. So it's quite, it's quite nice. As well as that, if you want to take a, uh, a capture, then we're going to hold down this one here and tap this, and you can see capture taken. And if we were to hold it down, it will do video. I'm able to take video capture now because we're on the wrong screen. So you can see that's quite clever, isn't it? But now I'm going to show you it working in GameCube controller mode, okay? So that's Switch Pro mode. Now, this button down here, I need to hold it down for five seconds, this turbo button here. And when I hold it down for five seconds, it will convert this from Pro controller mode to GameCube controller mode. So let me hold this down for five seconds. So one, and two, and three, and four, and five. Yeah, and now watch this back up on the screen. Let's zoom out a bit. Now when I hit the home button, it won't go home it will actually go to plus. See, can you see there, plus, yeah? And now, for example, when I press this button, it's coming up with ZR, and this one is not doing anything, and this is not doing anything until we click it down, then it becomes R and L. So now it's gonna be working as a normal GameCube controller in Smash. So let me just show you that now on the Smash screen. You can see it going between GameCube and normal. So you can see up there, and if you have a look, it says GameCube controller in use, yeah? So this right now is working as a GameCube controller. But now what we're gonna do is press and hold the little turbo button again, and you will see then when I start wiggling the sticks, it will go over to Pro Controller. So this will disappear from here. So you ready? I'm gonna press and hold it now for five seconds. One, and two, and three, and four, and five, okay? And you can see automatically it's gone. And now that will be working as a pro controller. And now let's hold it again. One, and in fact it says there in use. One and two and three and four and five. And now let go and now watch. Can you see? In use, it's come back there. So there you go, you can see now that that's the difference between working as a pro controller and a GameCube controller. So that's quite clever, so you can use it as a normal GameCube controller when you're playing Smash, but then if you wanna play Mario Kart or any other game with it, then you can use it as a Pro controller. So that's quite nice, especially if you like the feel of the GameCube controller, okay? And now can you see Home's not working when I press that? But again, hold it for five seconds. One, and two, and three, and four, and five. And now come off that. You can see it's gone off there. Press and hold this. Hold on, there you go takes a couple of seconds to go over to it so there you go that's that and now if we take it off here you can see it comes back onto here 
and then put it back down again, it will go back onto the TV screen again. And if you're wondering about the WaveBird, well, let's turn our WaveBird on. You can see I've got it plugged in here, and now look, straight away, it will work. Yeah. If you're wondering about third-party fake GameCube controllers, well, they will also work. So let's unplug the official one, and we've got this cheap, nasty one here. But look, plug it into the port here. Again, straight away, just starts working. Now, let me just show you the analog sticks working, because I never showed you that working. See there? It's working as analog. And all the way. And just little bits, yeah? And come out of there. And now let's do the same with the right one. Now watch this, even on this little one here, this is working as analog. Yeah? And all the way. And home there. Now if you're wondering about USB controllers, yes they work as long as they normally work with the Nintendo Switch. So this Wii U Pokemon Tournament one will work. So if I plug it in here, you see that after just tapping A button, it will start working. but other USB controllers won't work. So for example, your Xbox controller with USB is not gonna work, or your normal PC USB controller is not gonna work, because natively these don't work with the Switch. So it's not working like other Brook products or a Mayflash product converting signals. This is only working like a normal Nintendo Switch dock. Now I'm just gonna try out an ethernet cable into one of these ports here. Okay, here I have an ethernet cable. Let's plug in our little USB adapter, and let's go to connects to the internet via a wired connection, see if it connects up. There you go. You can see in the top corner here, it is now a wired connection. So just like the Nintendo Switch dock, that works the same as well. Right, let's show you some Bluetooth. Now with the Bluetooth, we have to press and hold for three seconds the function button down here. This blue light down here will then start flashing purple, and it will also kick over to USB audio. So at the moment, the sound is coming through the actual TV. When I press it here, look up here, it will come up with USB audio. So press and hold this for three seconds. One and two and three. And it's come up with USB there. And you can see this is flashing down here. So this is ready to be paired now. So I'm going to turn on my Bluetooth headphones here. And I'm, did I turn that on? Let's hold that on a bit longer. And I'm also going to turn, there we go, that's on now. And I'm also going to turn on this wireless receiver here this is bluetooth you can either have it as a transmitter or receiver i've got it on to receive so i'm going to hold this down as well i've previously paired these these are really easy to pair you put them both into pairing mode when it's flashing and they just sync up you sync up the first one then you sync up the second one so now if i go here you can now hear they're coming through here yeah okay and if i turn on this little bose english. speaker down here select english press and hold the multi-function button and now it should be coming through there. To select English, oh, hold on. Hold the multi-function button. Right. There. So let's put the volume up here. There. Okay. So you can see now it's coming through both Bluetooth devices at the same time. Let's say we want to get it back onto the TV. So right now we're still on the Bluetooth. Yeah. But now if we hold this for three seconds, one and two and three, then what will happen is it will now be back on the TV. Okay, so now let's have a little look at tabletop mode. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna unplug and you see it will come onto here again. Again, if we want to get it all set up for Bluetooth, it's not a problem, let's just zoom in a little bit. All we have to do is right now, you can see it's working up here as normal as a normal switch, yeah? Now all we're gonna do is hold down the function button for three seconds and you will see USB will come up here. There we go, USB. And then it will automatically pair with these in the next five to 10 seconds. There we go. Yeah, so nice and straightforward. Hold down this function button again for three seconds and it will come back onto the switch again. There you go, back onto the switch. Now, if it's not working, be careful because you could have the volume turned down here. So watch, let me go back onto Bluetooth again. Yeah, you see USB is on full here, but look, if I was to have this on here, it don't matter how loud we have it here, the actual USB on here is completely off or very, very low, and then you're not gonna be able to hear it. Yeah, so if I was to have it here like that, you're not gonna be able to hear anything. But now if I was to put it loud here, then you are gonna be able to hear it. 
Yeah, so don't think it doesn't work just because the volume's down here. Have the volume on max here, and then you can control the volume on here. Right, so as you can see now, it is actually charging up, so we're at 100%. So we can just use this as a normal, let's put it back onto uh, audio on the actual switch. We can just use it as a normal kickstand, yeah? But we don't have to have it plugged into the charger to still use the GameCube controllers and stuff on it. So right now, I have got nothing plugged into this. We're just using it as a normal stand. And if you have a look, you can still use it for your USB controllers and also your GameCube controllers. So you can see it is, uh, it is clever. And watch how quick it works. So we unplug it from there. And obviously this is no longer gonna work because there's nothing connected to it. So we're using it in handheld mode. And then we come home and we wanna play on the GameCube controllers. We plug it in there and then just press any button and then it will start kicking over to there. So it's pretty instant, isn't it? Let me show you the uh, turbo button. And also, I know a few of you are gonna be wondering about the Donkey Kong bongos. So I have, to, I have to bring these out to show you. So let's plug in the old bongos and then you can see these working and what buttons they're working on. Watch. X is up here, A is here. What you'll see in there is R kicking in because with this, remember, reacts the sound as well. So watch, every time I hit it, it's coming up with R. So we got A here, X here, Y here, and be there and then this button will take us home again and this button will be R, the sound will be R and then we can press that to go home which I'm not going to do now because I want to show you the actual turbo button working because the turbo might be of use to some of you. So let's go back to our wave bird here. Now let's say if we wanted X to be our turbo button well what we would do is we would press X and then we would press turbo here. So we're going to be pressing X and we're gonna be hold, pressing turbo at the same time. Now watch this, when I press X, can you see? Repeatedly it's doing it, yeah? So A, B, Y, hold down A. If I hold down A, all that's gonna happen is I'm gonna exit the screen, yeah? But now I can hold down X, and can you see it just keeps hitting it? If I wanna cancel that, I'm gonna hold down X and press turbo, and now that's canceled again. And now if I hold it down, it's gonna leave the screen. The reason I have to do it so quick is because on this one here, you leave the screen if you hold a button down too much. So let's say now if I wanted, uh, let's say if I wanted R to be the turbo one. So you can see when I hit this, it's going to R. So I'm gonna hold down R and then just tap turbo. R, tap turbo. And now watch, can you see? Yeah, L, R. And to release it, just hold it down press turbo and then it's back to normal and if I hold it down it's going to go off that screen there you go now is there anything else that I've forgotten well the uh, the turbo buttons only work on the GameCube controllers they're not going to work with the USB controllers so that could be important to some people also I should be able to use this with other products as well not just the Nintendo Switch so let me get my Samsung S10 and see if that docks Right, here we go, let's see if this will dock here. Right, it's charging. HMI connected, there we go. So you can see that uh, I've docked my phone as well. So that might be useful. And there you go, can you see I'm moving around? I don't know if you can see that up the screen or not. So if I was to go into, for example, Netflix, that's pretty interesting. So maybe you might be able to use that on some kind of dolphin emulator or something like that. That's another little added benefit, isn't it? Something, something interesting. And just to show you working on the Nintendo Switch Lite. Right, there we go, so pop that in there. And let's see now if we can use this on the screen. Yeah, there we go. So there we have it, I think an interesting little product. And in the testing that I've done on it, it's worked really well. So I suppose if you're in the market for a third party dock, then this would be one that would tick quite a few boxes. But you let me know what you think down in the comments. Well, that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a big thumbs up and please subscribe for more videos. Take care, bye now.